All right, presented by Litify. I'm Bill Biggs, and this is Transforming the Culture of Law. And so excited to have one of my favorite people in this industry on this podcast, Richard Rick Harris, uh, Professor Emeritus of PI Law in the state of Nevada. Uh, Rick, you are one of my favorite folks because of the way you treat other people, and uh, you have transformed the culture of law in Nevada. Uh, you were one of the first people that I met, uh, one of the first firm owners other than the firm that I was at when I got into this industry and observed how people functioned. And uh, I remember one of the first times of being with you, Rick, it was at a, a closed financial meeting of several, you know, a bunch of high powered law firms, really impressive firms around the country. And I noticed this guy that was kind of wearing this uh, short sleeve, wrinkly button up shirt, uh, very unassuming gentle guy, kind guy. And I was like, he, he kind of sticks out in this room full of suits and, and sizzle. Um, and then when we looked at the numbers, I realized that you were making more money <laughs> and uh, had higher margins than anybody in the room and that you had flown in on your jet, uh, and everybody else was on Southwest, you know? And so, um, I was just impressed. I was impressed that you were a lot more substance than you were sizzle. And I've been impressed with that ever since. So thank you for being on the podcast today. We want to help people. We want to help them by growing their culture, help them make a lot of money and love people while they're at it. So tell us a little bit about you, Rick, and welcome to the show. Thank you, Bill. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, what do you want to know? You want to know my story, how I got here? Or, or yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. How did you end up on this podcast? No, no, that's not the story. How did you end up in PI law? Well, uh, I, I was a broadcast journalism major in undergrad, and I thought I was going to be an entertainment lawyer. But as I got to law school and took uh, my tort classes, advanced torts, and trial advocacy, and so forth, I began to gravitate towards the idea of being a personal injury lawyer. I quickly figured out that uh, I would rather send my clients a bill. I'm sorry, a check. I'd rather send my clients a check than a bill. And I, ha I like the idea of uh, working uh, for nothing until we successfully resolve the case. And I like the idea of scaling and points and team work with the client uh, to be to be working together on a successful resolution so that all came together with the uh, the concept of being a personal injury lawyer and i suppose probably because i i uh, was terrible at math and chemistry so i couldn't be a doctor so this was the next best thing wow well, uh, that's amazing. This, your clients probably liked that they got a check rather than a bill as well. Yeah, I just uh, never was comfortable with the idea of keeping track of time and uh, getting paid, even if we didn't have a successful result. I think that all lawyers should only be paid if they if they do something for their clients. So that's right. Amen to that. So, Rick, from from those beginnings, you now have built. Um, I mean, year over year over year, the largest personal injury firm in the state of Nevada. And that's pretty impressive because Nevada is also one of the most uh, competitive markets in the country, Las Vegas. I mean, all of us have been to Las Vegas. I mean, every billboard in town, uh, it seems like every other billboard is a PI lawyer, uh, commercials. Tell me three reasons. Tell me three things you did to build a law firm of that stature, of this magnitude, in one of the most competitive markets in the country. So I have a, a true Nevada story. I uh, arrived in Las Vegas when I was a kid uh, by hitchhiking. Uh, that sounds glamorous, it, 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 1968. Uh, those were the days when you could still hitchhike and safely. And uh, we're actually moving to Las Vegas uh, from Idaho via one year in Southern California and we're on our way to Vegas. The car breaks down in the middle of the summer. And wh what you do in 1968 when your car breaks down is you stick your thumb out and, and hitchhike into town. So my dad and I hitchhiked into town in 1968 uh, 
as we were moving to town, my mom and sisters were in the moving van ahead of us. And of course, there was no cell phones or ways to communicate uh, with the family ahead of us. So we hitched a ride. We were about 80 miles out of town when the car broke down and we hitchhiked into Vegas. And that's my, my story about Vegas. We lived on a street called Fortune. Uh, and uh, I had a real Nevada experience growing up. I worked for Howard Hughes uh, as a nighttime, wow. nighttime security guard at the corporate headquarters in Las Vegas when Mr. Hughes was still alive. And, uh, and then uh, after law school, my first job was with uh, uh, three-time mayor, but at the time, mob lawyer, Oscar Goodman, who played himself in the movie Casino. And wow. I, I was the young associate in, in that firm in 1980 when uh, many of the events in the movie Casino were playing out uh, in real life. I, I knew uh, the uh, Joe Pesci character, uh, Tony Spilatro, I, I, who was a client of the firm. I knew the De Niro character, Frank Rosenthal, who was a client of the firm. And so I had that, that experience uh, during an interesting time in Las Vegas when there was a lot of influence by organized crime. And then uh, watched the town evolve through the 80s and uh, into more of a corporate, you know, family feel. And so I've always loved Nevada. And uh, back in those days, of course, 1980, Bates versus Arizona, the, the, the case that allowed lawyers to advertise was only three years old. And many, many lawyers, most lawyers, wouldn't have anything to do with marketing or especially TV advertising. And so I was sort of in that that era that didn't believe that was the way a, a, a lawyer should build their practice. And so for the first 25 years of my practice, I didn't do any advertising. I didn't do any marketing other than hand my card out to as many people as I could. And uh, whether I was in the grocery store line or or whether I was uh, at the gym or wherever, I just made sure everybody knew who I was and, and that I was a lawyer and specifically that I was a personal injury lawyer and I handed my card out to everybody. And it wasn't until um, the, the breakup of a, a large firm that we had built on relationships and, and uh, referrals exclusively, a firm, a good firm called Maynard Harris, which was from 93 to 03. And when that firm fell apart, uh, I was a solo practitioner again and uh, began to rebuild the firm and had the good fortune to have my son, Josh Harris, uh, join me at the time. And together we built or rebuilt the firm uh, and added marketing for the first time. And so the origins of the firm and first 25 years are nothing but client relationships and referrals. And then we sprinkled marketing on top of that and, and grew it back uh, bigger than it was before. Wow. I mean, so you established, I mean, a 20 year at least uh, kind of bedrock of relationships in the community before you ever put out any marketing other than passing out cards at the casino, right? That's it. So it's all, it was all, all relationships. And, and uh, of course, meeting the expectation of the client by having excellent client service and, and results, which then accelerates your, your referral base. Yeah. And I, I think there's something to that, Rick, uh, you know, I think anyone who meets you, who gets to spend a few minutes with you right off the bat experiences you as a kind, kind of a, a mild manner guy who uh, accepts everyone. You don't come across as pretentious at all. And I think that's critical, right, to the relationships that you built and are continuing to build with clients because they can smell that a mile away. They can sense if, if you're in it for them or you're in it for you. And it seems like everybody I've come into co contact with, with your firm, starting with you, obviously, Josh, he's been a workhorse there at the firm for years, Melissa, so many folks at your firm carry that same mentality. Um, what is it that you believe about people and about relationships 
that led you to do business this way? Well, my dad was the hardest working person I ever met. And my mom was the person with the biggest heart that I'd ever met. And so I ended up with some attributes of both. I, I have what people call a big engine, meaning that I'm, I, I'm able to work and, and usually outwork most people that are around me and have boundless energy that's uh, been a blessing and a curse uh, over, over my career. But my mom gave me this, this uh, big heart where I look at people uh, like God sees them. I, I, I believe everyone is good initially i start off with that premise and mm -hmm. and and i'm really interested in in the stories of my clients more than telling my story i want to hear about the story of my clients and anyone i meet i typically and inquisitively ask about you know where they're from what they do mm -hmm. uh, some life's experiences so i can begin to relate to them and uh, so i still do that to this day and uh I think that is what I teach my, my lawyers, my staff is to be empathetic and, and understand that our clients who are calling us are having the worst day of their life. And, uh, like John Morgan says, the, you know, the, the toilets overflowing and, and we're the plumber. So, uh, we, we approach our, our cases, whether they're big or small with that idea that these folks need help, they need it now. And we're here to serve, and uh, that's basically it. My my practice, you know, started off solo, of course, and all I've done is continue to add more people as my solo practice has gotten out of hand over the years. <laughs> well, you know, you're you're preaching the gospel that I love, Rick, with with how you f feel about people and how you think about them, how you approach clients. When I first came into this industry, I felt the same way about teams, you know, uh, from my background, I, I thought, look, you can get the most out of people and you can really build something great in a positive way if you uh, first love on them and first value that that person and and appreciate the contribution they're bringing to you uh, and give something back to them. And so. That's what you've done with clients. You want to give to clients. You want to hear their story more than you want to tell your own. Um, and I, I think you exude that when people meet you. Um, so you mentioned it. You talk about how you've built the firm on that. Do you train your team to feel that way about clients? I mean, do you intentionally seek to teach your people how to view clients in a similar way that you do? Yes, we teach that. Uh, the culture of any firm good or bad starts at the top. And I, people know my story, uh, not only in the community, because we marketed that story over the years, but people that work for us, our team, uh, they hear the story frequently. We have an annual boot camp that you have been a speaker at, and thank you very much for helping us with our culture. But you know that we, we have an annual boot camp uh, where we kind of have, have a reminder of where we came from, who we are and where we're going. And, um, part of that boot camp every year is I give literally the same speech, uh, which is a longer version of what I've told you earlier about, uh, my, my background, my love of Nevada, my love of people, hardworking, like my dad, big heart, like my mom. And, um, the answer is always yes. Uh, when I went on my own after leaving Oscar Goodman's firm, I, I did a general practice for about 10 months uh, while telling everybody I was a personal injury lawyer. I took every case that came in the door. You know, a, a lady called up and said, are you a show business lawyer? Yes. Uh, a person <laughs> called up and said, I got a zoning problem. Are you a zoning lawyer? Yes. Yes. <laughs> are, you a, are you a collection lawyer? Yes. The answer was always yes. It's always yes. Yes, I can help you with that. Yes, uh, I'll get right back to you on that. Yes, yes, yes. And I did that uh, for the first uh, 10 months and then uh, devoted exclusively to uh, personal injury uh, after about 10 months on my own. Love it. Love it so much.
Yeah, and, and you've done that not only with clients, but you've developed probably one of the strongest referral networks that I've ever seen with other firms across the country and the way that you take care of them and, and the way that you keep up with them and stay connected with them um, and some of the things you do when they refer you cases. So tell me the genesis of that. Tell me your thoughts on how you have become such a powerful referral partner with so many firms. Well, naturally, Las Vegas has about 50 million tourists a year. And a lot of those tourists uh, get hurt when they come to town, either in a car wreck or a premises liability case. And then they go home and hire their local lawyer, first off. And those local lawyers then reach out to a Nevada lawyer uh, to place that case and uh, bring it home. So. So many years ago, I, I realized uh, through going to conferences and trying to learn more about personal injury that I was establishing myself as the Nevada firm uh, that you could count on to get the case done uh, successfully and also pay a referral fee. So we get hundreds uh, of referrals every year from other lawyers around the country because we are known to be the Nevada firm and we actually are a pretty good firm and we litigate and we have good results in trial. And so a lot of firms, you know, they, they're good marketers, but they don't have a lot of substance when it comes to the courtroom. And yeah. we sort of developed that substance in the courtroom even before we, we began to market. So we're a little unusual that way that we, we talk the talk and, and, uh, for example, a couple of years ago, we had the second largest wrongful death verdict in the country uh, at $38 million uh, on a premises liability case. And so we we are able to back up our, our brand promise uh, with results and, and good client service and communication with our referral partners along the way. Yeah, and, and you guys reinforce to everyone that you are the Nevada lawyer. Um, Julie, our producer is gonna screen share with us a little bit and show us some of the swag that you send out, uh, not only to referring uh, attorneys, but also to clients. So there's the Nevada box, right? I mean, that says it all, you're the Nevada lawyer and you send this box out to every single person who sends you a case. This is your referral box, right? That's correct. We have. That's box number one, I'm noticing from from the contents. And then if a person sends a second case, they'll get box number two, which will be in the same Nevada shaped box, but have different swag. And then once they become, uh, uh, if they send a third case, uh, then they're identified as a referral star in our law firm. And we have over 500 referral stars, meaning they've sent three or more cases to us. And then they get special treatment uh, different acknowledgements, uh, and different swag, a little, little higher end swag, but still hopefully within the, the bounds of uh, de minimis when it comes to <laughs> yeah. state bar. Yeah, I love it. I, I, I want to be, uh, at that, uh, star level so I can see what's in that box. <laughs> um, now this next, uh, slide we've got is that, that's you and Josh. Josh is the heir apparent. Uh, yeah. you guys put out this magazine spirit in Nevada. Yeah, so so that's my son Josh. He's been with me as an attorney uh, since 2005. He's of course been working in the office going back to his early teen years when he used to take the city bus and come down to work uh, at the office downtown and literally become a runner and running around delivering copies and filing documents with the county clerk and so forth. And so he's he's lived and breathed the the, the personal injury practice for for most of his life and and he is the heir apparent to the firm and in our marketing we we begin to introduce him i don't want to be the i don't want to be the oldest guy on television and so uh we started <laughs> to, to introduce josh as as the the heir apparent and uh, the spirit of nevada uh concept or initiative is is basically the the outreach that we do uh, focusing on the hidden gems and heroes and organizations and people around Nevada that have made a difference, make our state great. And we've, we've done over 200 uh, video episodes showcasing different things 
uh, in the last five years on Spirit of Nevada. We also call our annual magazine that we send to every uh, contact that we have in the firm Spirit of Nevada. There's a Spirit of Nevada calendar. What this does is, is, is a different funnel letting people know that we we love Nevada. Nobody knows Nevada like we do. Yeah. We we uh, we know the people. We know the cases. We know what 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 it's like uh, to be to be a Nevadan and to be proud and and, uh, and of our battle born heritage, uh, fiercely independent. You know, a consummate swing state uh, every every political year. We're a melting pot of all kinds of different people. Uh, where where you know everything goes. Uh, in terms of a good idea, <clears throat> even if it's not the mainstream. And so that's our Spirit of Nevada in initiative. And uh, what you're seeing now on the on the screen share is uh, our case closed box. This is a, a box that we send to every client at the end of their case. And again, it's got some swag in it and it's shaped in the form of a, a briefcase with a case closed a logo emblazoned on the front. And so this is just another touch point, another way that we've uh, reinforced our, our referral initiatives. Many years ago, we, we, you know, we, we just decided to systematize our referrals. A lot of people don't keep track of their referrals. They don't keep track of who contacts the firm. We, you know, we only have 3 million people in Nevada, so we've got to make every, every contact uh, worth something, even if yeah, we don't make them count. Even if we don't handle their case right now, they're clients of the future, and, and we make sure that there's that emotional connection. They feel good about us and what we do for the state and, and uh, our love of Nevada. And so we touch them on an emotional level in the beginning, even before they need us, certainly throughout the case, and then at the end of the case and forever with uh, continuous contact. Yeah, that's fantastic. I love that. I, I love all your swag. I think it's brilliant. Uh, I love that case closed. For those that are listening on Spotify and iTunes and unable to watch the video right now, uh, actually, you need to go to Litify and watch the video. But if you can't, the, the case closed box is really cool. It looks like a briefcase, says case closed, as Rick said, stamped across the top. I bet clients love that. I bet they get a big kick out of that and they get their check. They get their case closed box. Uh, that feels good. In fact, those are such good pieces of swag. I know a lot of firms, a lot of people out there are going to want to see what's in there and see those ideas that you've done. So we're going to do some giveaways here. Rick has been kind enough to tell us that he will give away 10 of his swag boxes. I'm going to say you can you can pick between the case closed box or the state of Nevada box. And here's how you get it. The first 10 people who text into this number, 979-219. 1404 with the message Rick Harris rocks is going to get one of those boxes. Tell us which one you want. We'll send it out to you. Um, you're doing such good stuff there, Rick. It's no wonder that you guys are the number one biggest firm in Nevada. One thing that's been interesting, and then we're, we're, we're winding down here in the last few minutes, but I want you to tell us you've taken a different approach to branding. You don't do a whole lot of call to action. It's not the same approach as so many firms across the country have done. I mean, I, I remember a couple of years ago, you had this idea, which was just doing this commercial uh, that you blasted out that just thanked people for making you Nevada's largest personal injury firm. And it was more of a, again, thank you. It was about them and not you. Tell us your thought process behind that and how you've become so successful with a little bit of a different marketing strategy and what are you doing now? You've been doing some really neat content stuff. Yeah, so so I believe that all important decisions, including choosing a lawyer or any professional, are based on emotion. And so, be you know, you want to feel good about who you're choosing, or even if you're buying a car, it's all it's all based upon how you feel. And so we figured out that we want to be the lawyer that somebody would choose even before they need one. And so this gratitude kind of spot that we did was thanking everyone for caring enough about their family and friends by sending them to us when they needed our help. You've made us Nevada's largest personal injury law firm. And this, this kind of sh broke through the clutter of all this mm -hmm. uh, other stuff, you know, that's on TV. 
uh, this direct response stuff because my ads tend to be low key and uh, understated, but then the message that we're saying is, well, oh, wait, they're the biggest. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. You, know, you know, so it made people think, and it, again, it, like you said, it's more about the client than us. You, you, you've cared enough by sending your loved ones to us. So along that line, um, all of my spots are uh, branding and uh, image spots. They are emotional. We tell stories. My son and I play off each other. Uh, he being the heir apparent and me being the older guy and we do some funny stuff uh, that appeals to the head, heart and funny bone. And uh, it's memorable because uh, there's more TV advertising in Nevada per household than, than any other state. And uh, we like to say our people are educated because they see so much TV advertising. But in order to break through, <clears throat> you've got to make them the client, prospective client feel differently about you. And so I can't tell you, Bill, how many times I've had a client come in and, and sign up with us and say, I always told myself if I ever needed a client or if I ever needed a lawyer, it would be you. That, wow. that, that is repeated over and over and over again in our practice. Love that. Love that. Well, you've done something remarkable there, Rick, and hats off to you. Uh, thank you so much for being on the show. I've got two more questions for you, and then I'm going to give away $1,000. Um, the first question is, and, and you know, th this is what we want to do for, for folks that are listening, for firms, whether that be established firms or brand new lawyers or any leaders within, they're going to learn something from Rick Harris. There's no doubt about that. What advice would you give to young lawyers who are just starting out? Maybe they're starting their own firm. They got, it's them and a paralegal and they're trying to get started. They're doing a little bit of advertising or whatever. Think back, all the stuff you know now, what advice would you give to a young PI lawyer? Well, it would be the, to follow the same path I did, you know, to develop your immediate personal radius of influence your 1,000 or 2,000 people that you know personally and that you make sure they know who you are and what you do and all the advertising from your competitors uh, in the world are, are never going to break through and have any influence whatsoever on your personal radius of influence if you make yourself available to your family and friends and extended friends uh, and acquaintances. If you let them know that you're who you are, what you do, and that you're available to help them, the millions of dollars spent by other personal injury law firms will have no influence whatsoever with you and the ability for you to develop a, a practice just by word of mouth. Then when you add social media to that and other types of marketing, then word of mouth is on steroids and uh, you're able to leverage that, to scale that, to have your radius of influence expand beyond those people that you personally know. That's why you're transforming the culture of law, Rick, because you know, it's built on relationships. <clears throat> All right. Last question. This is a deep one. This is a pretty important one. You've talked about Josh being the heir apparent. You've built this great firm. You've poured your life into it. <clears throat> you've poured your life into so many people in your community and around the country. What do you want your legacy to be, Rick? Well, when the end of the day comes, what do you want it to be? Uh, I think that uh, if I could measure up to who my mom and dad were, uh, my dad being the hardest working person I ever knew, my mom with the biggest heart, if I'm known for hard work and a big heart and that I hel helped people <clears throat> and made a difference, uh, I think that's the, the, the greatest legacy I could ever have. Um, it's not about the money. If you do a good job and live up to your, your brand promise, <clears throat> the money will follow automatically. And, uh, that's what we do. We, we just continue to grow the firm, adding new pods with more lawyers and more staff to help more people. And that's the legacy I want is that he was a good man. He worked hard, he had a big heart and he helped a whole lot of people and made a difference. Love it. That's the Rick Harris. I know, man. Thank you so much, Rick, for being on uh, transforming the culture of law podcast. 
you are one of the best out there. Uh, so many of us can learn from you. And I hope everybody who's listened to this podcast uh, takes your words of wisdom and puts them into practice into their lives and into their firms. And I hope maybe they'll come out to Vegas to come see you. I mean, I know it's hot. It's getting hot out there. But uh, Vegas is a good place to be any time of year. So Transforming the Culture of Law and Vista Consulting are giving away $1,000 right now, a $1,000 gift card on the airline of your choice to go anywhere you want. I would recommend Vegas, but you can go anywhere you want. 1000 bucks to the 12th person, the 12th person who texts 979-219-1404. The number again, 979-219-1404. If you're the 12th person that texts Vista Rocks, Vista Rocks, text that. You're going to get 1000 bucks to come see Rick Harris. He's going to take you out uh, to a mobster steakhouse probably uh, on his dime, I'm sure, because that's the type of guy he is and show you around Vegas. Thanks so much, Rick. Any any parting words? Thank you, Bill, for the opportunity today to share. And thank you for all you do personally to help lawyers around the country improve their culture. And you've done an amazing job uh, and continue to the good work. Thank you. Appreciate you so much, Rick Harris. Thanks for those kind words. And that's it, folks. Never miss an episode. Subscribe to The Culture of Law on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or at litify.com backslash culture of law. We'll see you next time. Hip-hop.